Hi and welcome to this 3D 180 degrees video. So if you're not watching this in your VR headset with the YouTube app, do so now because then you'll be able to check out this video in 3D because, well, I'm using the Views XR cam to make this recording. I told you about this camera at the CS and now I'm having it and now I'm checking out for you guys to check out the quality of this camera. So again, use your VR headset to watch this in the YouTube app and then you should be able to see this here in 3D and 180 degrees. So as you can tell, I'm not in Dortmund, Germany, but I am here in Taipei, Taiwan, where I'm spending some time with my wife in my wife's home country. And well, that makes for a very nice change of environment. And well, I hope you enjoy this. So in this video, I would like to give you my highlights, my VR and AR highlights from CS 2019. As you know, I was in Las Vegas to check out the CS for you guys. And why don't we directly jump into it? So here are my VR highlights. First of all, of course, we had the HTC announcement, two new headsets. One, the Vive Pro i very interesting naming scheme it's the it's the vive pro with eye tracking built in i checked it out at the ces and well eye tracking works perfectly eye tracking is fantastic for vr because it enables something like foveated rendering which is is a technology that allows you to um, yeah use less resources for your computer since well not the whole scene has to be rendered in the full resolution but only the part where you look at so that's definitely amazing however but the headset i'm not so excited about it because well it's a completely new headset so it's not some kind of add-on which people that you that already paid for the vive pro can simply clip into it no it's a completely new headset so in my opinion lots of people who paid lots of money for the vive pro will be very disappointed that now their headset that they paid top dollar for is already obsolete so in my opinion that is not a great thing to do and well HTC pulled off an HTC here <laughs> but however the other headset that they announced about this one I'm more excited it's the HTC Vive Cosmos it's a headset that uses inside out tracking with four cameras so instead of having to use lighthouses right some kind of base stations you have four cameras and these four cameras track your environment and track the two controllers that the vr headset is using so that is something very exciting however it does not compete with the oculus quest because the vive cosmos is still tethered to your computer so you can still play your favorite vr games like skyrim and all these games which are actually very demanding which cannot be played on a mobile vr headset right now so in my opinion that's something exciting because well we kind of hope for this functionality with the oculus quest but we're going to get it with the Vive Cosmos. So that is kind of interesting. They're going to push their own platform, not, um, not Vive port, but uh, Vive Realities, I think it's called. And basically it's simply their own ecosystem since they need to also build their own software business to be able to compete with Oculus, for example. So that is an interesting headset. And about this one, I'm kind of excited. They said they will also enable you to not just connect this to your computer, but to other devices as well. And they kind of teased something that you will be able to connect it to your smartphone and then probably get content via a 5G network. Yeah, very exciting stuff. Then another exciting stuff, which is very closely connected to that, is actually what I saw at the Qualcomm stand. So Qualcomm, they're doing the chipsets that is being used in most of the mobile VR headsets. Last year they had a reference model and this reference headset on this the um, Vive Focus was built on and also the Mirage Solo. So this year they're showing something and most probably that Vive Cosmos that I just talked about is based on that reference headset and I tried it and I was very positively surprised by the visual quality of that headset. It used 2K resolution per eye LCD screens and with these screens you couldn't see any more um, um, screen door effect. It was simply perfect and yeah it worked really really well and even though unfortunately it was LCD display not OLED but it was still simply so good and most probably we're going to see that display also in the Vive Cosmos. So 
If they use this display, we're going to have lots of fun playing our favorite games. Yeah, also that that reference model actually it, it got its data, its content from a 5G connection via a, co a connected mobile device that was running a Snapdragon 855. So most probably this is also what we're going to see with the Vive Cosmos. So that's definitely that was a was a highlight for me. Then. Pimax. Pimax had a very successful CES 2019. First of all, they showed off, of course, the Pimax 8K, the Pimax 5K Plus, but something that I was excited about was the Pimax 5K Business Edition, which is actually a Pimax 5K with an OLED display as compared to the other displays which use LCD technology. So that was nice. We saw that nice colors, nice blacks, really beautiful contrast and it was pretty amazing. I really liked that headset a lot as compared to the other two headsets, which I also like, especially the 5K Plus, as you know, but um, the OLED colors simply make it for me. I really loved this headset more than the other two. And even though the screener effect is not as good, I mean, there's more screener effect as the 5K Plus and the 8K, but still I like this headset the best because of these beautiful colors. If I would, say uh, if I would have to describe the screener effect it is it is less screener effect than the original Vive but more than the Vive Pro so somewhere in the, in the middle between original Vive and Vive Pro anyways I still really like this device more than the other two headsets so this this is my favorite Pimax headset <clears throat> then they also showed eye tracking however they showed an eye tracking module that they can simply that people can simply clip into their existing Pimax headsets. So not like HTC, where they sell a completely new headset. No, you can simply get this uh, module and then you will have eye tracking and it worked just as well as the Vive Pro i. <laughs> so that is something interesting. Also, Pimax, they have now uh, a US representative, uh, a head of US operations, Kevin Henderson. I met him. I interviewed him and I think lots of people in the West will be happy that there's now finally a Western face. Also with Stephen Bowman, they have a partner in the UK, so definitely great news. And well, again, if CES was a party, Pimax was yeah the heart of the party for VR. It was definitely a very successful CES for Pimax and they got lots of great press as well. So we had a, we had a very nice, um, we had great Oh, now we have <laughs> we have some animals here. Do you see that? Oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> oh my God, you should totally share this moment with your friends. <laughs> yeah, we are here in the nature. Yeah, anyways, so um, what, what, was, what was I about to say here now? Um, yeah, so we have these Western representatives and um, yeah, that was good. And they got lots of great press. We had great, um, we had great um, coverage for Pimax from Road to VR, Upload VR had a very positive article. Then Linus Tech Tips did another video and now they were positive. So it's for me, it's very nice to see that because well, I told you guys that like a half a year ago that these devices are actually amazing right now. But well, you as MRTV subscribers know things first, of course. So that was really cool. Yeah, unfortunately, Oculus was not there. You had to have an appointment with Oculus and then they would show you into some hotel room and then they would show the Oculus Quest. But I didn't know that beforehand. So I didn't have an appointment and I couldn't make it past the Facebook security that was downstairs in that hotel. So unfortunately, I couldn't see the Oculus Quest. And I, in my opinion, sad to see that Oculus was not there and uh, hopefully they're gonna be there next year. But we're going to hear lots about Oculus in this year with the Oculus Quest. Yeah, then w there were lots of other things like the Views camera, Insta360 Insta cameras, lots of other cameras and we saw the 3D rudder for the PlayStation, we saw cyber shoes, so lots of different things. There were lots of different things that I even didn't have time to check out, like the Odin Pre headset for example. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots, there were lots of VR things and I couldn't even cover everything. So in my opinion, it was a very nice CES as what VR is concerned. Now let's talk about AR. So AR was also really, really strong at this year's uh, CES. And I want to point out two headsets that totally surprised me. And they took 
me <laughs> by Storm and it's the Nreal glasses and the Real Max glasses. So Nreal, the CEO, he had been working for Magic Leap before and probably he thought to himself, you know what, I can make that better. I'm going to make sleek VR headsets and I'm going to come out with that earlier than the Magic Leap consumer version. And he kind of succeeded. The Nreal glasses are very, very cool glasses. They look like normal um, sunglasses and the visual quality of these Nreal gla glasses are actually better than these of the Magic Leap ones. That was, that was pretty fascinating for me to see. And they're going to come out with this for thousand dollars in the third quarter of this year. And you can connect um, these glasses to your phone if you want to see all your phone content hovering in the air. You can connect it to this own little computer they call Toast. You have like a little um, a controller, three degrees of freedom. And it, I was pretty amazed. Check out my video of the Nreal glasses that are also here on YouTube. Yeah, then the other AR glasses that I thought are really cool are the Real Max glasses. They are <coughs> AR glasses with a wide field of view, 100 degrees, very comparable to the VR headset that we have right now. And there's a little um, leap motion module connected to it. So you can, yeah, you can uh, use your hands and draw something, for example, and then you can walk around what you drew. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Also, again, the display looked better as compared to what I saw with the, yeah, with the Magic Leap and the HoloLens. So definitely these two AR headsets were very exciting and there were actually many more VR head AR headsets that I also didn't have the time to try. So AR is getting stronger and stronger and it's kind of amazing to see these two ones that I really liked to see them come out and, and present products that actually have a better visual quality than the Magic Leap one. So that was pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, so for me, it was a very, very exciting CES, my very first CES. And hopefully lots of more CESs are going to follow. And I truly hope that you enjoyed my coverage from CES 2019. And um, yeah, if you did give it a thumbs up, give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now. I truly hope that you enjoyed this 3D 180 degrees coverage. Please also do comment in the comment section how was the quality of this video? How did you enjoy the 3D quality of the views XR camera? Please do let me know in the comment section below. And I think I really enjoyed this moment when when this little squirrel was uh, walking by here. <laughs> that is something really amazing and I'm glad I captured that. All right, that's everything that I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.